Hello there everybody, it's Nua Wants, and today we're going over a video I promised to my TikTok community. If you aren't a part of it, go ahead and follow, and if you are a part of it, subscribe here please. One of my commissions got slightly viral, and so I'm here to talk about my own personal tricks I've learned through friends or messing around on my own. These are all tricks that I use daily, and make the process of building an avatar a million times easier. Originally, I was going to make a new model from scratch to show all of these techniques, but since that would take more time than I wanted to use here, I'll be using previously or currently worked on models that I have. So, here real quick is a list that I'm going over. Pause the video to see if there's anything specific you want to jump to. I do recommend watching the whole video since these will all benefit you. Obviously, this isn't going to be covering the basics of avatar creation, so if you need help getting started making VR chat avatars, I will be having links in the description to help you get started from other content creators, as well as fixes to these issues listed here. Pause again, and if anybody has any other links to recommend, go ahead and comment their name and what video they have a tutorial on, and it will be added to the directory. Finally, I do want to mention that I use mainly Blender 2.79 still to create my avatars, and I know this will cause some controversy. 2.79 is what I'm still most comfortable with and will continue to use until I feel like learning 2.8 or 2.9. If you're new here, each version has a slightly different layout and hotkeys, which personally just bug me too much to change. For most of this tutorial, I will try to at least give the 2.8 solution as well, since they are close enough. I don't have a 2.9 though, so you'll have to mess around a bit to find the solution you're looking for. And if you want to recommend moving to a different blender, leave a complaint and my associates will get back to you in 1 to 2 million business days. I prefer 2.79 for my model work and 2.8 for 3D building. I may be moving to 2.9 eventually because of a blender note I want, but we'll see. This is going to be recorded a little bit differently if you couldn't already tell, because I already made the video, I am just going to watch over it and make commentary live, so you will see the video at the same time as me. Um, I hope that this becomes helpful. Honestly, I'm not very good at tutorials, I don't think, at least like this. I'm more talented, I guess, at live questions, so if I get enough feedback from it and you all want like a live stream where you can just ask questions, go ahead. Um, as per usual, I am not a professional. This is all stuff, like I said, learned from myself or my friends, so some of it may not be the best solution to a problem. And if you know a better one, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Politely. With that though, I'm gonna go ahead and click play and we're gonna watch. So the first one is with subdivision. Now, if you don't know what subdivision is, it's pretty much vertices and you can cut up the vertices to make them more vertices. As you see, I'm using pose mode right now and the clothing is clipping through the skin. That's because the skin has more vertices than the clothing. And vertices are like, like I said, these little triangles that make up the mesh, which is the body, which is the pants. So I'm going into edit mode and I am going to reset how it looks so I can see them a lot easier. You can see there's not many vertices there, so of course it would not bend as much. And this is pretty simple. I pressed C to get that cursor. You can also just press A twice to select or deselect, but I just use C because I like to make things more difficult. Now for subdivision, you can either press the W key in 2.79 or right click in 2.8 in edit mode, or you can also press spacebar in 2.79 and just look up subdivision, which I did there, and then that's the W option right there. And now I have subdivided. We're gonna go back to object mode and pose mode, and then we're gonna hit shadeless again. And when you move, see, the knee is all better. Next up is group vertices. So usually when working, this was a big issue I had is I hated fitting clothes onto bodies because it just never fit right unless it was TDA. And now that I use a non-TDA base, it's just so much harder. Before you'd have to move, yeah, one vertice at a time. And that sucks. Sorry, I had something in my mouth. Um, so instead, you're gonna see at the bottom, there's this little circle that I am clicking. If you press O, it'll turn it on and off, and if you use your wheel scroll, it'll make it bigger or smaller. And right there you see the scroll wheel, and you can move a group of vertices at once. You will see a better example of this later on in the video, but this was just a small example, and it makes things a million times easier. This is what I use to fix all of my 
avatar so they fit the body. I'm also going to show it here on the shirt. The shirt's extremely baggy and let's say I wanted it to be a little more form fitting. I can just click those sides, push them in. You can see it, it moves the sleeves a little bit so you have to be aware of that. It will move all vertices nearby but I could just move the sleeves back no problem. And you can see that it makes the shape a lot more form fitting which makes it look a lot nicer if you're looking for that. Here's what it looked like previously. And next is weight blending. So weight painting is something that's very important when it comes to models. If you're just starting out, this is a terrible simulation. I forgot to bring that up because I didn't really have anything to work on. So I just got rid of the weights on the pants. But if you're just starting out, usually TDA models are already weighted for you. Or if you buy like this base, there's a lot of panda bases uh, clothing that are already weighted for you. But in case you need to weight something by hand, this is how I do it. Um, I start by weighting the pieces I need completely. Now, as I explained here, the armature is the bones, which is the triangle. The mesh is the skin, and the colors that you see are the weight paints. And that's kind of like the muscles. And so I, that's how I think of it and makes it easier for me. Um, here I'm explaining exactly what colors mean what. Red means it's going to stick to the bone 100%, while blue means it's not going to stick to the bone at all. That's why you see a lot of the model being blue. And right now I'm just kind of doing a mess of cleanup. This is not the best weight paint I've done because I'm just kind of trying to rush through it and it's it's not looking super nice but as you saw earlier I moved my leg away because it was getting weight painted as well and you don't want that because whatever you weight paint it's going to move with um, so here I've just kind of skipped ahead and now we're using the blur tool in the tools option while we're still in weight mode and what this will do is it'll gradient better is so it makes things a smoother transition because if you have both sides on red, they're both going to be stuck 100% and they're both going to be very jagged. And so I'm doing a little bit of weight paint and you can see they're still clipping. Well, this is also what makes Blur Tool really easy is I'm going to move that up so it's easier to grab. Go back into weight mode and I am going to use the Blur Tool once again to kind of just go through and figure out what I need to use. Um, you can also use Darken and Lighten, which do the same thing, except only darkens or only lightens, which means it only takes away and only adds. Blur both adds and takes away at the same time. And I know I'm going a little fast, I'm sorry, but here I used a Darken to get that to match a little bit, and then we're gonna use Blur to kind of smooth it out, make it look a little more natural, and just, keep on going this is i should have sped this up a little bit more but hopefully through this you can see where i am on the left side it says tools it there's cats plugin which if you haven't once again worked with avatars before you shouldn't be watching this video first you should be watching a tutorial on how to work with cats and stuff because none of this will make sense but next we have transfer weights. So let's say you don't want to weight paint by hand and the outfit is just completely off. And this is where I'm going to show you a bit more in detail how I use the vertice movement. Um, you can scale. I used to just scale outwards and then move by hand. But here I am actually using my previous technique, which as you can see makes things a lot more accurate and a lot easier to work with. It just, it, it's, it's a lifesaver. And I will tell everyone to do this because it's just it's much more easier you can see that i'm i'm even being able to go into like this difficult details but this is an important part i wanted to bring up is right here usually pants especially because this was a tda pant they are very low poly and so you're going to need to kind of finagle and uh subdivide up in this area so this is kind of using the techniques we've learned so far uh to make avatars fit because when you subdivide, there's just there's more to work around with. So this is a better way to kind of explain subdivision and using the O button to move things. But now that I've got that all fit in, I am going to transfer weights. So I'm going to have to go really fast. But pretty much how this is going to work is I'm going to connect the body and then connect the pants to the body so that they are on the same armature. Delete the old armature, uh, separate by materials so I can have that separate again. And you can see here that the weight paint is clipping through. You can't see it very well, but it, it's clipping, I promise. See, there it is. That's a better shot. So what I have to do is, as I said, um, you're going to have to separate by materials. And then you're going to need to click on the skin first or whatever, te uh, whatever weight paint you want. The skin has the perfect weight paints that I want to copy. So I click on 
Um, I click on the, oh, I also subdivide because, you know, it's better to, the more, the more subdivision vertices you have, the more you can weight paint because that's how weights are based. They're based off of vertices. But anyway, you right click, uh, skin, then shift right click the body. And then you go into where it said edit mode. Um, it says edit mode now. It's going to go back to object mode as soon as I finish being, uh, way too perfectionist. So click, click, right click. Go to weight paint, click on that, go to weights at the bottom left, go up to transfer weights, and then scroll down to source layer by name. And that is it. That is all you have to do. Go back to object mode, you can go to pose mode, and you can see now that there is, oh, well, you can't see. That's how you do it in 2.8. <laughs> but there is no clipping. I promise you. There you go. There you go. Now you get to see. No clipping. Amazing. Beautiful. Mwah. Love it. All right. What's next? Okay, apparently we're not done. Okay, there we go. Uh, all right, so next is mesh discolor. This was an issue I had for the longest time. I didn't know how to fix it, but here we go. We added some nice glasses on her, and I want to add it to the body. So we do as usual. You know, we just add it, click on the mesh. Oh, it, it turned orange or brown. How'd that happen? Well, you know what? It's fine. Let's click on the body and then click on the mesh that we want to add. I uh, Nobody says to do that. I wonder why. Oh, look. Now it's not connected to the right armature. So what happens is we just kind of turn the body and it, uh, oh, that's not good. All right, so we need to undo all that real quick because that's, that's not what's supposed to happen. We need to use the mesh we want to add first. Now, here's the problem. In UV maps, I have it named differently. The glasses are called UV maps, while the other one was called UV map. Because they have different names, when I add the glasses, it overrides the UVs, which makes it get rid of the UVs pretty simple. So by changing into the same thing, I can now attach it correctly and it's working perfectly fine. Next up is the easy toggle system. I hope this is all going not too fast, but toggle system, we've already added these glasses. They look great. Uh, they aren't weight painted though, so we're just going to weight paint that real quick. Connected to the head because that's where it needs to go. Go to draw, 100%. Done. All right. So what we need to do is we need to separate by materials again. And now that everything's separated, we need to connect the materials that we want to be toggleable, and we hide it using H. And that means it's still here, it's not deleted, but it's hidden. Now that it's hidden, I can connect all the body pieces together to make them one mesh again. So now we have two meshes, the glasses and the body. And they're still connected to the armature, but they are able to be separated so they can be toggled. This is not the most optimized way. You will automatically be hit as a medium, as I state right here. But... The important thing as well is that there is another way to do it that we will go over later. Finally, when it deals with mesh, we have transparent meshes. This one's really quick over if you look in the corner of the bottom right, there's a transparency button. You click on that, it doesn't make it transparent anymore. You can also fix this in Unity just by making the standard shader opaque instead of transparent. Pretty easy. Next is going to be shape keys. So shape keys is when, oh hello, we got a new girl here. Shape keys are what makes your mouths move with the basic uh, models. So it's how, instead of using a jawbone to open and close your mouth, this makes it so you can go A, E, I, O, U. But you see here that this body specifically has shape keys on the hips, the chest, the breasts, the shoulders, all of that. And while that may be nice for customization, there are issues where you could have working on a model or having a model popular, or not popular, having a model, what is that word? Updated. Uh, into VR chat and when you talk it kind of goes outwards, which I'm going to simulate here You you talk and it's just like what a 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 so if you have that issue that that that's what this is um, Pretty much if you separate by shapes as you saw earlier in the cats plugin It's gonna show all of the items that have shape keys attached to it So the way that I deal with this is you go back into edit mode after separating by shapes um, that's really dark and I can't see, so I'm gonna have to change the material real quick. Give me one second, and whoop! Alright, there we go. It's just a bodysuit, I swear. So, I use my C again, and I select all of the vertices that have shape keys on it. Now, you need to make sure to never hit the face. That is the most important thing. The blend shapes on the face are what makes your mouth move and talk. So if you aren't planning on talking, I guess it's not that big of a deal, but if you are wanting to use it to talk, then you cannot get rid of it, which is why I'm taking the time to kind of carefully go in and hit all of these appropriately so I don't end up screwing myself over. But now that those are there, 
We can see I moved it. It's separate. We need to go to mesh. We need to go up to vertices and right there at shape propaganda blah, 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 blah. I can't pronounce that word but that one that'll get rid of all the shape keys now realistically you could also just remove the shape keys manually in the shape key area I showed earlier however I don't do that because it's more specific this way uh, finally is no texture for this model um, as you can see the hair is pink sometimes when you bring a model in the hair is gonna be pink and that means there's no texture but the weird thing is is if we look down in the material options it does have a texture I gotta just click the hair one there it is and scroll down and it does have a hair texture and that that's weird because it says it has the hair texture let's just double click it make sure it does and it's still pink I, I don't know what's going on. Let's go ahead and look. Double check. Is that the right hair texture? Let's see. Um, yep, yeah, that's the right one. That's the one we needed. So here's what's actually going on. There's a little checker box next to the material that you need to click. And you need to make sure to change the material on there as well. So when I click that, bam, fixed. Easy. Don't know what it does, I'll be honest. I wish I could explain in more detail. Look how happy she is. She's got her hair back. She's She's got no shape keys in her body. But finally, this is the actual finally, Unity to Blender. I got this asked in my Discord a few times ago, so I'm gonna explain it here. Say hello to Laypip, everybody. I'm sure he's happy to see y'all. Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing? Oh, here he comes. He's waving. Anyway, so what you need to do is Unity models have an FBX, which you're going to see I'm messing with right now. Say goodbye to her. She hasn't been here a while, so let's get rid of her anyways. But when we go back to the Unity file, you're going to see those four things in the bottom. Those are FBXs of my model. So the first way is you go and show by Explorer, right click the FBX, and then copy paste. Remember the name and then go into Cat's plugin, import model, and up there. Just paste the location, find the name again, there it is, and then double click it, and it'll, it'll, it'll pop right in, there it is. And just click fix model to get all that stuff all fixed up for you, and it'll just easy peasy lemon squeezy show the materials, and you're all ready to start working on it. Now there is a second way to do this, which is a way that I sometimes do but do not recommend, which I will be showing now. Um, I will be going back into Unity and I will be uh, duplicating because this is a model I used for a commission, so I'd rather not have it, you know, screw up. Um, so I duplicated the FBX that I needed and I'm going to pull it out into my desktop up in that uh, top right corner. So now I have the model on my desktop. So when I go back into Unity or Blender, same thing, import model, go to my desktop, and there it is, easy, if you didn't want to do it that way. The problem with this, though, is because all the textures are still in the previously made one, um, so in that, in that Unity file, they aren't going to show up here. So if you do it this way, you're going to have to do what I just showed previously, go into your materials, go to the textures, find the textures, and then sometimes you're going to have to go to the checkerboard next to it, and then click on those textures, and it's just, it's a lot more work. There's all the original materials, and this is where they're taking the textures from, so you're going to have to go into that explorer uh, if you need it that way. But that is pretty much it. That is probably the fastest I've ever talked. I didn't realize how quick it went through all of this. I am so sorry. It probably would have better. It probably would have been better if I just did it live. But the reason I didn't do it live was because I was concerned that I would not talk like, uh, or I'd not. I'd go too fast, or I would not like talk accurately enough because there are times where I do stumble on my words and this didn't get to really let me have much time to stumble but at the same time it also didn't give you guys much time to uh to work with everything so if I went too fast on something let me know message me comment and I will go into more depth on my TikTok so I can go into more depth there I could answer questions there um that's probably the best place right now to try and get information on how to world build or avatar build from me so if you do have any questions, I recommend follow my TikTok. It's up on the screen right now. And have a great day. As per usual, drink your water, eat your broccoli, and be fantastic. I'll see y'all in the next video.